We now come to the most important part of our convention tonight. That's the preaching of the Word of God. Amen? Okay, so get ready. I'll be with your notes and your pen. And may I request that if you still have your cell phone switch on, switch them off. Don't put it on silent mode. Switch them off. In our church, it is a mortal sin for any member whose cell phones are switched on. Because you cannot listen properly. Am I right? Okay. So look. If I see any one of your phones switch on, I will confiscate that. Or tomorrow, I'm going to put something in the whole building in which you cannot use your cell phone for the whole day. Amen? And this is not respecting me. This is respecting the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Okay. Let's all stand. And tonight... Our speaker is no other than my older brother. He's just smaller than me, but he's older than me. You look at his hair. Look at my hair. Mine is still growing. His hair is grown. Uh, <laughs> see how he walks? All right. I'd like to invite now Pastor R.A., all right, of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church to come and preach to us the word. Get a big hand, please. Magandang gabi. Oh, habang kayo nakatayo, buksan natin ang ating mga Bibles. Of course, you have a Bibles tonight, right? And you have your notes tonight? This is what we'll do. You will not just listen tonight, but you will watch. Watch and listen, di ba? Right? Okay? Walang matutulog. Walang mga ngarap na nakatingala, ganyan. But watch. Because sometimes the message is in the watching. It's not just in the listening. Amen? Okay. So, first, some two sets of passages here. Ang una ay nasa James chapter 1 and verses 22 to 25. James chapter 1 verses 22 to 25. And here, itong passage na ito, we will read. Sundan nyo lang akong tahimik. I will be reading the text. <clears throat> and here the Bible says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man or if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Did you follow that? Amen? Amen? One more text, and this time, it's also found in James, chapter 4, and verse 17. Now this time, we will all read, and read slowly, so that you can have the idea in verse. Okay, James, chapter 4, and verse 17. Read with me now, ready? Slowly, go. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. And doeth it not, to him it is sin. Sa Tagalog, pwede nating sabihin ganito. Sa makatuwid siya na nakaaalam gumawa ng mabuti. Subalit, 
hindi niya ito ginagawa. Para sa kanya, ito ay ano raw? Kasalanan. Kung alam mo kung ano ang mabuti, subalit hindi mo ginagawa, ikaw ay nagkakasala. Correct? Kung merong expectation sa iyo at alam mo na merong ine-expect sa iyo na gawin mo at ito'y isang mabuting bagay at hindi mo ginawa, nagkakasala ka. Naliwanag? Okay? Nanalangin tayo. Takilang Diyos, we pray, Heavenly Father, that He would use this message. And Father, that you would use this servant to love, Lord, tonight. I pray that even as we start this conference, Lord, you might begin to touch our hearts. That we might see, Heavenly Father, how that this conference might really plant the seed in the hearts of all these who are listening and watching now. So that you may be glorified in our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated.
May na-expect kayo? May naasahan kayo? Ha? Yan ang first point ko. That's my first point. Kakainip, ano? Yan ba may inaasahan kang gawin? Pero hindi mo nakikita sa inaasahan mo. Para ba nakakainis? Ang pagkinagawa ni pastor, magkakasaya ng oras. Di ba? Hindi mo nakakainsulto yun? Pastor, init na init na kami rito. Ano ba? Simulan mo na! Eh, ano ngayon? Buhay ko to eh. Problema nyo. Ba't nyo ko pakikialaman? Eh, ano kung may na-expect kayo sa akin? Kasalanan ko ba mamunta kayo rito? Pati ako, inibita rito eh. Pinakiusapan lang ako na ako mag-preach. Eh, ano ngayon? Eh, ngayon, mag expect kayo? Kasalanan ko ba yun? Pero maroon na naman ako mag-preach, di ba? At alam ko, mabuting bagay yun. Eh, ba't ko simulan? Sa totoo lang, Maraming kristyano na ito ginagawa eh. At kahit magpagwapo epek ako dito, yan, yeah, yan. Yeah. <laughs> Kung hindi ko ginagawa yung inaasahan sa akin na gagawin ko, baliwala yun! Pakyot-kyot ka pa! Kasi mo, oras mo eh. Eh di bali sana kung nagsimula ka na, natapos ka na ngayon. Isipin mo, 15 minutes, wala kang ginawa, pastor. 15 minutos. Sa Amerika, 10, 10 minutong preaching, tapos na. Hindi ka pa nagsisimula. Balikan natin yung text natin. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and do with it not, to him it is sin. Yung iba sa inyo, nagtataka yung iba naiinis. Yung iba naiinip. Ngingiti-ngiti lang kayo sa akin eh, pero tagal naman ito. Aabutin tayo ng alas onsin ito.
Nabasa ko sa Bible na ang preaching ay isang mabuting bagay. Dapat gawin. Kaya nga ang sabi ni Paul, kung hindi ako magpipreach, ang bihira, di ba? Eh, paano pang halaga ng buhay, di ba? Kung ikaw'y preacher? Ano pang disenyo ng buhay? Ah, teka muna. Design, design. Alam mo, ako, marunong ako mag-design eh. Nung araw, nag-design ako ng ano eh, ng aeroplano. Aeroplanong papel nga lang. Di, alam niyo, maraming itsura yung aeroplanong papel eh. Mayroong mahabang ganyan, matulis, di ba? Nung araw, nung maliliit pa kami, doon sa aming church nung araw, yung mga messenger, yung mga bulletin na, ginagawa namin aeroplano yun eh. Kaya nagkahalat yung mga bulletin doon nung araw, yung bago pa magsimula yung service, puro aeroplano na yung mga bulletin nung araw. Wala na mabasa yung mga tao, kasi puro aeroplano na eh. <laughs> Nagagawaan namin yun, yung mga young people. Tapos, eh, pahabaan sa area ng aeroplano. Okay? Meron ako kaibigan, yung design niya ng aeroplano. Eh, ang laki-laki nung pakpak. Ako naman, ang dinidesign ko yung matulis. No? Pero pag hinagis kong ganyan, wala, gano'n lang. Shhh. Pero yung kaibigan ko, nung nagdesign siya ng aeroplano, porke malapad yung pakpak, nung hinagis niya, shhh, shhh, shhh. Parang gano'n, ang tagal sa ere. Wow! Good design. Di ba? So magkakansyawang kami. Ruben, yung design mo, palpak. Mabuti ang design ko, maganda. Tama? Alam niyo tayo, design ng Panginoon. Eh. At ang Panginoon pa nag-design, hindi siya nag-design ng palpak. Ang bawat disenyo niya, magagawa kung ano yung disenyong iginawa o ipinlano sa kanya. Bakit ko nasabi yan? Sapagkat sa Ephesians 2.10, ang sabi rito, For we are His workmanship. Now, listen very carefully. I address you tonight as Baptist youth. I do not just address you as youth. I do not just address you as Christian youth. I address you as Baptist youth youth. Okay? Ibig sabihin, may katangian yung pag address ko sa inyo. May katangian akong gustong i-deliver sa inyo na unique at very distinct sa mga Baptist. Unang-una, ang mga Baptist, masyadong biblical yan. Tama? Amen? Kung merong mang biblical sa lahat ng uri ng kristyano sa buong mundo, ang mga baptist ang pinaka-biblical. You believe that? Oh yes! Kung merong mang tumatayo at naniniwala at sumusunod detalyado sa salita ng Diyos, baptist yun. Kaya ang preachings natin, hindi pwedeng walang Bible. Because that is the very foundation. Now, because you're uniquely Baptist, I address you tonight. So, kinakailangan, makakita tayo ng uniqueness sa atin. Doon sa Lighthouse, palagi akong may sinasabi sa aming mga kabataan, sa aming mga members. Tandaan nyo ito. Okay? Follow, follow carefully. When the world is 
sitting. You, Baptist youth, should be standing. You follow? If the world would be standing, you Baptist youth should be standing out. nag stand out? Hindi sa labas tumatayo, kundi nag stand out. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kung ang lahat ay nakatayo, mas matayog ang tayo mo kaysa sa iba. Tama? Yun yun. Bakit? Because you are uniquely and you are distinctly Baptist youth. And if the world would stand out, syempre, alam nyo, ang mundo, palaging gusto ng challenge yan, di ba? Pero ano naman tayo? When the world would try to stand out, the Baptist youth should be outstanding. And if the world would dare to be outstanding, then the Baptist youth should be the standard. Ibig sabihin, angat palagi tayo. Why? Because the Bible says we are peculiar. At ang ibig sabihin ng peculiar is this. Tayo ay above the usual. Why? Because we know the Word of God. We are uniquely and distinctly biblical. Okay? So yun ang pinaka-platform ng pinag-uusapan natin sa gabing ito. Now, Evidently, sabi natin kanina, that God designed us so that we can do good. Bakit? For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath ordained before, that before ordained that we should walk in them. Lumakad saan? Lumakad sa mabuting lakad. Tama ba? Okay. So, wala nang duda dyan, Pastor. Alam natin na bilang mga mana ng palataya, we are ordained, we are designed by God to do good. Pero alam nyo, one thing about doing good, napakahirap. Aaminin ko sa inyo. Mahirap gumawa ng mabuti. Madali ba? Mahirap. Sino magsasabing mahirap gumawa ng mabuti? Wala. Wala. O sino magsasabing madaling gumawa ng mabuti? Wala rin. Eh, tatahimik na lang ako dito. Pero totoo yun. Kasi, kahit nga si Paul, ina-admit niya doon sa Romans 7, 18 to 25, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, Teka muna, But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Si Paul yan. Kaya nga, Pastor, hirap na hirap ako. Hindi naman ako si Paul. Intindihin mo na lang ako. That's my excuse. I am not Paul. O, teka muna. Tapusin muna natin. Yung sinasabi ni Paul. For the good that I would do, I would, I do not. But the evil which I would, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Siyempre, meron tayong kasalanan. Meron tayong old nature. I find in the law that when I would do good, Evil is present with me. Gumawa na nga siya ng mabuti, pero nandun pa rin yung hatak. Hinahatak pa rin pababa. Mabuti na nga ang ginagawa ko, hatak pa ng hatak pababa. Bakit kaya kung kailan ka mag-gusto gumawa ng mabuti, napakahirap magpatuloy yan, no? Correct? 
Kaya katanya yung mga grades ninyo sa eskwelahan, up and down. Oh, first grading, ang bihira, first honor ka. Second grading, second honor. Third grading, third honor. Fourth grading, first honorable mention. Fifth grading, wala na. Ang hirap kaya mag-maintain nun, pastor. Kahit naman sa church eh, punta ka sa fellowship ng young people, ang saya mo the first time! Tama? Pero ang hirap i-maintain yan, lalo na kapag ang leader, katulad ni Pastor Dimber. Di ba? Ah, sabi ni Paul, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Verse 23, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of his death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Kung wala yung verse 25, may excuse tayo. Ang kita niyo ba yan? Kung wala yung verse 25, may excuse tayo. Kung wala yung verse 25, hindi ako magsasalita. Tutuloy ko na lang yung tahimik ko. But praise God! I thank God through Jesus Christ so then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God. Why? Because my mind has been renewed. By the renewing of your mind, I pray that through this conference, your minds might be renewed. Amen. Yung mga mindset natin, ang kinakailangang ayusin, wala namang problemang ligtas ka na eh. Wala namang problemang pupunta ka na sa langit. Wala namang problemang si Kristo na sa puso mo. Ang problema mo, yung iyong isip, hindi renewed. That needs to be rehab and reconstructed. Yan ang ating isip. Kailan niyo ba si Dennis the Menace? Yung comics, the Menace nga eh. E ang kulit ni Dennis, siyempre Menace siya eh. Sabi nung nana niya, Dennis, because you are so a Menace, you sit down. Ayaw mo po. Sit down. Ba? Ang ginawa ng nanay niya, kumuha ng sila, inihrap sa, sa yung, yung corner, yung kanto. Iniupo siya, you sit down. Di na upo si Dennis. Habang nakaupo siyang ganyan, sabi niya, I may be sitting down, but my mind is standing up. <laughs> you see what the mind, what the mind can do? but with the flesh, the law of sin. I mean, how does he Paul? O, pero teka muna. Pastor, ang mahirap nito, binanggit na natin yung design natin to do good, to do good works, to do... Alam na natin yun. Alam din na natin na mayroong difficulty ang lahat ng bagay na yan. O, pero teka muna. Ang problema ng maraming mananampalataya, hindi natin actually alam kung ano ang good. Ah. Right? Alam natin, do good. Anong good? Kasi ang mundong ito, lahat ng good relative. Okay? Kapag busog ako, good yun. Kapag may pera ako sa bulsa ko, good yun. Correct? Kapag napasalang ko yung gusto ko, good yun. Pag may iPad ako, good yun. Pag may tab ako, good yun. Pag kasama ko yung mahal ko, good yun. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong iniisip na good. Pero ang punto, yun ba ang good sa Bible? Kaya, ang unang punto natin, nakita natin, ano yung unang punto ko? Wala. <laughs> yung tahimik. Okay, so we are designed to do good. However difficult it is to do good, 
But basically, let's answer the question. What things are good? Now begins the message. What things are good? 1 Timothy 5.4 1 Timothy 5.4 You know, Timothy is a good representation of the youth. Nagikinig kaya? Ulitin ka. Timothy. Ano nga yun? She was. She was a man of God. But Timothy is a good representation of the youth. Okay? Anong sinabi ni Paul kay Timothy? 1 Timothy 5.4 But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents. For that is what? Good and acceptable before God. Okay? Ah, teka muna. Ang pagkakaintindi ko rito, Pastor, ano eh? Yung mga widow, let them first show piety at home. Hindi. Yung children or nephews. <laughs> okay? Ibig sabihin, dito ay tinuturo na ang mga bata, no, should be able to requite. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng requite? Patahimikin yung mga magulang. Requite. De mali. Ano ibig sabihin ng requite? Any of you here who knows the word requite? To requite their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. Ano ibig sabihin ng requite? Ha? Huh? Ibig sabihin ng requite, balikan ng mabuti ang kanilang mga magulang. Bible ba yan? They must learn first piety at home. Ano yung piety? Yung naaawa ka. Piety. <laughs> Hindi. Ano ba? Ano ba? <laughs> ha? Yung meron kang sense ng pagiging makadyos. Yung meron kang reverential fear sa Panginoon. Kinikilala mo kung ano ang turo ng Diyos. Okay? In essence, kinakailangan makita yan sa mga Baptist youth sa tahanan. Nakikinig ba kayo? Ay, salamat. Alam mo, pastor, itong conference na ito, nakatakas din ako sa bahay namin. Kasi, busit na busit na ako sa magulang ko eh. Alam mo, pastor. Yo. Hello. Can you do this? Pag uwi niyo sa bahay niyo, pagkatapos ng conference na ito, can you tell your parents, o kung wala man yung magulang niyo, can you tell kung sinong kasama mo sa bahay na nagpapakita ng kagandahang loob sa iyo? Tell them, Ma, Pa, Tita, I love you po. Mahal ko po kayo. Pwede niya bang gawin yun? Magagawa niya ba yun? Come on! Magagawa niya ba yun? Sapagkat dyan unang magbabago ang ating kaisipan. Minsan kung sino pa si Baptist Youth, yung paampalaging kalaban ng magulang... Okay? Minsan kung sino pa si Baptist Youth, yung pa yung masama ang kanilang testimony sa kanilang magulang. Eh ano kung hindi mana ng palatay magulang mo? Eh ano kung hindi Kristiyano ang magulang mo? Mas lalo kang may dahilan para magpakita ng magandang kalooban sa kanila. Bakit? Kristiyano ka eh. Paano sila hahanga sa iyong pananampalataya? kung hindi sila makakita ng mabuti sa iyo. Paano sila magkakaroon ng respeto sa iyong pananampalataya kung hindi sila makakita ng kaibahan sa iyo? Naanuwaan niyo ba?
Huwag niyong tatakasan yung magulang niyo. Huwag niyong i-cheese yung magulang niyo sa Facebook. Sa kaibigan mo. Ako hanga ako kay Fog kanina eh. Dati na yung ba yung testimony ni Fog? Ha? Alam niyo, alam ko kung paano mo disipin na kapatid ko eh. Pero narinig ko kay Fog kanina, I thank the Lord for my dad. Anong sabi ng verse? For this is what? Good. Sana ang dalangin ko. Alam mo, pastor, magmula ng yung anak ko, nag-attend nung, ano ba yan? Yung buisit na, ano yun? Baptist Youth Heritage? Yung konbe, ano ba yan? Ano ba yung BHYC? Pero magmula na mag-attend yung anak ko niya, naging bumait yung anak ko. Diba? Sana kunin na siya ni Lord. <laughs> ang bait. Grabe. Now, come on. Pero ang sabi ng Bible, eh, ano nga raw? For that is good and acceptable. See, that is the first thing that we need to understand about the good things according to the Word of God. Unang-una eh. Hindi ba ang unang-unang pangako sa Bible? Ang, ang unang-unang uh, command sa Bible na may pangako, ano nakalagay? Ha? Ano, ano, ano? Alam niyo ba yan? Oh, come on. Children, obey your parents. For this is right. Ang sabi ng Bible, and this is the first commandment with promise. Referring back to the commandment mismo sa pan Exodus and Leviticus. So, yan ang unang parameters ng good. Amen? Ang ikalawang good, pastor. Meron ba bang ibang good? Oh, yes. Meron pa ikalawang good? Galatians 6, 9, and 10. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen? Ayun. So, the second good that we need to understand is the good na hindi, na, na uni- distinct from the good in the home. Kundi the good in the work of the Lord. There is a good in the work of the Lord that Baptist youth must realize. Amen? Amen? Now listen. Hindi pampadagdag problema ang church. Amen? Hindi pang gastos ang church. Pag pambira naman kasi pag pumupunta ako sa Metropolitan, nawawalan ako ng pera. Hindi. See, from God's perspective, yung mga good na yan, to which we are designed, ay diyan nasusukat. At yung parameters ng good na kung saan tayo designed, ay doon dapat makita. The good in the house of God. Maraming bagay tayong pwede pag-usapan tungkol sa good. Sa tahanan ng Panginoon. Sa gawain ng Panginoon. Hebrews 13, 15, 16. Anong sabi rito? By Him therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. So there is the good in the house of God that we should understand. And it's not an excuse because you're Baptist youth not for you to know these things. Kaya tayo nandito. Alam nyo, sa totoo lang, marami sa inyo, akala nyo ang good nasa labas ng church. 
Kaya pag may nang hatak sa inyo, labas tayo. Sama kayo lahat kasi good yun eh. But to do good and to communicate. Ano yun? O hindi lang pang praise and worship yung good. Pang offering din pala yung good. Pagkakaloob din pala yung good. Paglalagak din pala yung good. Kasama na dyan lahat ng resource natin. Yung strength natin. Amen? Yung talino natin, yung lakas natin. Yung yaman natin. Good. Nakikinig kayo? The good in the house. The good in the church. Hi, Pastor. Salamat. Okay na yan sa amin. Palagay ko yan. Dalawang yan. Okay na eh. Ah. Teka muna. Baka mayroon pang isa. Sana lang. You're still awake? Sana lang. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 3. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men Period ba yon? Period na kalagay? Ha? Pe- ano anong 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 ano yan? Punctuation, ha? Semicolon. So, hindi pa period. Hindi pa tapos. Pangalawa, for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is what? Good. And acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. So, hindi lang pala good sa bahay, hindi palang pala good within our ministry, si nga, kundi meron pa palang good for the country. Good for the nation. Good bilang mga Pilipino. At wag mong sasabihin sa akin na hindi kasama yan dun sa disenyong Tayo'y ginawa so that we can do good. Because according to the Word of God, that is good. Ay, nako. In First Peter, ang sabi, let him issue evil and do good. Let him seek peace. And pursue it. Look at that. Kung meron daw na naghahangad ng kapayapan and ensues peace. Ano yung ensues? Dinidemanda niya yung ano? Su, su. Yung ba yun? Dinidemanda ba yun? Ensue? Hindi. Sinusunod niya. Pinupuntahan niya. Yun yung ibig sabihin yan. Hinahangad niya ang kapayapan. That is good. Alam nyo, let me show you some things na dapat concern natin lahat. At para ma-realize natin na hindi lang tayo pang tahanan, hindi lang tayo within the four corners ng ating churches kundi isipin natin ang kalalagyan ng ating bansa. Nakikinig ba kayo? Ito ang sabi ng survey. Sabi ng survey, 63.9% of adolescents in the Philippines live with both parents. 63.9% of adolescents. Sino yung adolescent? Kayo. Tama? Okay. 63.9% na lang na mga young people ang nabubuhay kasama ang kanilang mga magulang. So, ano yung butal niyan? Ano yung butal? 
Forty, ano? Thirty? Pakiulit? Mat, mat. Thirty-six point one. Ibig sabihin, thirty-six point one of young people in our country live without both their parents. Tama? Abay, malaking bagay yun. Thirty-six, that's more than one-third. Ibig sabihin, sa sampung kabataan, sampu! Hindi. Sampu! <laughs> sa sampung kabataan, tatlo sa kanila, o higit pa, tatlo't kalahating kabataan. Okay, mag-aapat na. Halos apat na kabataan ang nabubuhay na wala ang magulang nila. Palagay niya maganda yon, Ha? Hindi maganda yon. Akala natin nung araw, maganda-maganda yung magkaroon ng OFWs. Di ba? But we do not realize the societal cost. No? Yung pagkakaroon ng mga OFWs na malayo sa kanilang mga anak. Sa urban poor area, urban, ma urban po, no? In not urban poor, but urban areas, 59.8 live with both parents. Ito, iba to, no? In the Philippines yung una, as a whole country. But, sa urban areas, like Metro Manila, o kaya Cebu, urban, urban area, hindi ba ang Dabao, urban na? Okay? O, oh, yung mga key cities natin, sa urban areas, nakalagay, 59.8 only live with both parents. Ibig sabihin, Minus that, no? Ay, wala. Ito, nakalagay, 22.9% do not live with both parents. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin, yung mga malaya ang magulang nila, okay, live with other people. At yan ang nagiging root cause ng maraming problema ng kabataan. Hello? In fact, meron nga sinasabi ngayon na virtual parenting. Alam niya yung virtual parenting? Have you ever heard of virtual parenting? Lapa, Ito yung virtual parenting. Yung nanay tsaka tatay, hindi na kasama yung kanilang mga anak dahil busy sa negosyo, busy sa trabaho. Okay? Yung bata palaging nasa bahay, iniimabukas yung TV and everything. Anong ginagawa ng magulang? Okay, bibigyan na yaya. Ano, ano? At ang gagawin niya, kukuha siya ng Skype. Yung Skype, i-oon niya buong araw. Kaya at least, malayo man siya doon sa tahanan, alam niyo kung ano nangyayari kasi may Skype. Ganun ang uri ngayon ng kinalalakihan natin sa ating society. Sino ang nakaka-impluensya sa malayo yung mga parents, eh di kaibigan, eh di social media, tama? Eh di artista, okay? Pagkatapos wala ka pa sa church, come on! Hindi lang yan. I'd like you to see a survey na ginawa itong 2012, tungkol sa lumalaking cases ng HIV-AIDS sa ating bansa. Alam niyo ko ng HIV-AIDS. Can you show the quick, the quick table there? This is February 2012. From January to February, total reported cases of HIV-AIDS is 400 86. Ngayon yan, ha? January to February 2012. Okay? Ngayon, tinan nyo to. Youth of the 486, youth from 15 to 24, 133 cases. 
Is that reality? That is reality. In fact, this one is only according to reported cases. Maraming hindi reported cases, lalo na sa HIV AIDS, dahil nahihiya sila. Ilang percent yung 133 against 486? Come on. From 15 to 24 years old. Ilang percent yan? Sino may calculator? I-divide nyo nga. 133 over 486. Ilang percent? Times 100. Come on. Huh? Just from January to February alone this year, 486 cases of HIV AIDS reported. Ilang percent? 27 percent of that figure, are you listening? Are cases na ang involvement ay idad ninyo. Now, come on. Ngayon, ito hindi nakalagay sa data. 11%, 11% of that 133 ay nangyari sa mga environments ng call centers. Are you still listening? What I'm saying is this. Because you're Baptist youth, there ought to be a good in you so that these cases might be arrested. So that these cases might not continue. Sino magsasabi sa mga kabataan ito, kundi kayo rin mga kabataan. As you go along, you meet people and you should be the ones to tell them, you ought not to do that. It's a sin against God. O baka kayo pa mangungunay. Now listen, that is reality. Hindi lang yan. Hindi lang sa bagay ng maraming mga kabataan ang malayo sa kanilang magulang, hindi lang sa mga figures ng kung ano-anong sakit ang laganap dito. Okay? Nariyan pa ang kung ano-anong batas na ipinipresenta o mga bills na ipinipresenta na hindi isang ayon sa salita ng Diyos. And tomorrow, isa yan sa mga pag-uusapan. That is the reason why we are telling the Baptist youth to stand up and be the standard. Good. The good in the home. The good in the work of God. And the good in the nation. Meron tayong kinalaman dyan. Why? Because we have been designed to do good. Pastor, one question. Paano, mo, paano po namin malalaman at magagawa kung anong dapat gawin? Sa lahat ng kinokonfront natin na issues today, napakabata pa po namin. Hindi pa po kami kaedad ni Dr. Abante Jr. Talagang malayong malayo na siya. Diba? Mga kaedad namin eh, si, si Kuya Proby lang. Bata pa. Diba? But how do you know? Alam nyo, it's not just in knowing, but it is in our relationship with the Lord that we are able really to know and to prove that which is good. Because in Romans chapter 12, open with me there, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Sino yung brethren? Come on, sino yung brethren? 
Hindi ba Baptist youth yun? Amen? I beseech you therefore, Baptist youth, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, reconstruction, the rehabilitation of the mind, that ye may prove what is that good. Ibig sabihin, ang sinasabi ng Bible sa atin, Kung makikinig lang tayo and let it from one ear to out the other ear and we don't do anything and we do not give our lives to God, we cannot do the good and we cannot prove the good. We have, we have a condition laid down dito sa salita ng Diyos that we have to offer our lives to God so that we can actually prove the good. Experientially do the good. So, condition pala yun na ang ating buhay ay maibigay sa Diyos. Sapagat pag hindi, you cannot actually do the good from the home to the church and even to the nation. Is there a reward for the good? Oh yes, there is. And I wind up with this. Psalm 125 and verse 4. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. Nainip ba kayo kanina? Were you expecting something that I should do? You were. Ang tagal, no? Pastor, natiis mo kami. Ikaw lang ang kauna-unahang tumayo sa pulpito. Walang ginawa. Fifteen minutes? Natiis mo kami? Ano kaya sinasabi ng Panginoon? Sa mga ine-expect niyang marunong gumawa ng mabuti, at hindi ginagawa. Kayo ang sumagot. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Everyone standing, please. Dahil po tayo tumayo. Habang nakayuko ang ating mga ulo at nakapikit ang ating mga mata, tonight in the first night of this convention, we can start searching our hearts. Searching our hearts why the Lord saved us. Why the Lord saved me if you are saved? And why I am here tonight? You can look at your life this evening and see and realize tonight that you have been designed by God by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross to do good. That is how you are created. We have been specially, spiritually created by the Spirit of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. We have been created. We have our hearts created by the Spirit of God that we might do good. You look at your life right now. Each one of us. Am I doing good? Am I doing good at home? Do my parents appreciate what I'm doing? 
or I do not follow them, I don't obey their instructions, and I am hiding something from them. I am not as obedient as I ought to. When our parents are good to us, they have done wonderful things for us, they have done everything for me. They have sacrificed for me to be able to study and learn and graduate. If you are still living in your own home tonight, does your parents appreciate your Christianity? Does your own mother and father appreciate you being a born again Baptist person? Or you do not bear the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because you're not living right. How about doing good in your church? How about that? How about your relationships? Huh? As young as you are, are you busy serving God or you're busy with other relationships? When you're not even supposed, you're not even supposed to have any kind of emotional relationship but you don't listen to the pastor you would rather listen to your emotions and you think you're right and you think you're given that right instead of just focusing on your studies and serving God and doing a ministry what is your testimony in your church do the pastor appreciate you? Do the pastor thank you for serving God? Can the pastor depend on you? When he looks at you, is he happy and joyful because you are serving him? Or you cannot even look at the eyes of your pastor because you're hiding something. Doing good in the church. And doing good for your nation. Tayo mga kabataan, preachers, kids, whoever you are, what is your contribution to your nation? What is? Can you tell me? Can you tell God? Can you tell yourself tonight? What? Am I a testimony of goodness to my barangay? A testimony of goodness to the SK? A testimony of goodness to my classmates? A testimony of goodness to my neighbor? That's doing good to your nation. Am I right? To those that are working tonight, are you paying the right taxes? Because that's what the Bible says. Are you a law-abiding citizen? Can you ever say that my nation will never make me a problem because I obey every law? Do you evangelize? If you're a student, do you have a campus ministry? Huh? Are you the key to the gospel witness in your university, in your college, in your high school? Or you just go to school and study and go home? Go home. We always tell our young people here, Kahit ikaw ay nag sa college na yan, the Lord has appointed you to be the key to open that college for the gospel. You're the key. Are you the key? How many of you have won your classmates to Christ? How many of you here is even a testimony to your own professor? How many are? Huh? In the campus. How many? What kind of young people do we have in our own churches? Are we growing? Are you able to get young people outside to come to your church and, and get saved? Doing good to your nation. How about you in the workplace? You or young people are working right now. Are you able to witness to your co-employees, your boss? Can those around you in your company can see Christ in you? The hope of glory. Oh, there's no difference. 
There's no difference between the Baptist youth and any kind of youth in town. There's no difference. The Bible says we ought to make a difference. We ought to make a difference. Are you making a difference? Are you making a difference tonight by being good? Search your hearts to this evening. As I search my heart, think of your own life tonight. And perhaps you can start by, by making a commitment to God. I'm going to start doing good. I'm going to start doing good to my parents in my home. I'm going to start doing good in the house of God, to my church, to my pastor, to my, to my brethren in Christ. I'm going to start doing good. And I'm going to start doing good for my nation. For my nation. In school, I'll be a witness. In the workplace, I'll be a witness. I'm going to show forth that the only way for this nation to be changed is for someone like me who have experienced Christ in my own heart to be a witness of His goodness. How many of you would want, would want to commit yourself to that? If you want to, then I want you to just go ahead and kneel down where you are and make that commitment tonight did you understand what we said tonight naunawaan niyo ba yun o wala kayong naunawaan you know your own heart this evening your parents don't know your pastor don't even know your neighbors don't, even your own siblings don't. You're the only one that knows it. 